always get harped on for how much negative news I cover on the show because let's face it, there's a ton of things to report on and most aren't all that great. <laughs> but today's Friday, so I think it's about that time to laugh and also to cover the most amazing technological advancements happening in the world today. From invisible cloaks to remote control cockroaches, science fiction has officially become reality and who better to break down all the insanity than my good friend and host of the Moment of Clarity web series, Lee Camp, yes, man. Yes, insanity expert. That's what I <laughs> of am. Of course you are. <laughs> Lee, let's start off by talking about this amazing, okay, we know how crazy the oil lobby is here. We know the stranglehold it has on D.C. Yeah. Um, so, of course, they've stifled the electric car for the last, you know, the who killed the electric car. They've stifled this technology, but they haven't stifled the Tesla electric, electric car from being able to be produced driving across the country for free. Yeah, they announced they can, you can drive across the country for free with the Tesla car, but they're trying to stifle it. They're doing their best. I mean, <laughs> uh, just the other day, uh, New Jersey passed a law saying uh, you basically to making it really difficult for Tesla to sell their car, some, something with Chris Christie. Usually he's on the up and up. <laughs> I don't know why, why he would be involved in backroom dealing. But uh, yeah, they're trying to, which it's really funny. They're like, they're like it's the only way. We, all, we can only get energy from oil and gas. Everything else is not feasible, right? Wind, not feasible. IBM's new photovoltaic thermal system could power the earth not feasible but they're like deep sea drilling do you have any idea how difficult that is they're like sticking a noodle a miles thousand and miles underground. underwater <laughs> just to have a monopoly on our energy resources it's insane Lee, and they could also uh you know they can they can use re existing i can't speak existing infrastructure like parking lots and roads for solar i mean they can really revolutionize stuff here lee we no, don't no, even no. have it's not, it's not feasible stop Abby, stop, stop feasible. talking we can build the largest surveillance infrastructure the world has ever seen but we can't touch our infrastructure we can't like fix our infrastructure give it electric infrastructure give, give we can't change our world that way yeah but and i love an, surveillance. an, an obama state of the union he's talking about well, finally climate change is a huge issue but that's why we need fracking. You're like, wait, what? No. Yeah, that's, fracking, that's crazy. fracking's so easy. It only requires billions of gallons of fresh water, <laughs> water pumped yeah. into our ground and contaminated. Yeah. But it's easy. You get that's a free pizza, yeah, Lee, yeah. if Chevron explodes no, it's, your it's house. It's all about having a monopoly over it. <laughs> Speaking of great solutions that are kind of being stifled by the corporatocracy right now, let's talk about the fact that marijuana is being recognized as a cure for cancer. I mean, Lee, more there is, more. this is just insane. I mean, it's a horrible I, idea. I, I wanted to really quickly just explain this according to molecular, molecular biologist Christina Sanchez on Cannabis Planet cancer cells actually commit suicide after canna, cannaboid Am I saying that word right? Something like that. Something, uh, can, uh, I'm an insanity treatment. expert, not a scientist, <laughs> all right? THC actually switches off pathways that allows tumors to grow. This is incredible. Right, right, right. And it's getting more and more accepted. But we can't allow that because if you allow medicinal marijuana, then it could cause like a run on Tostitos. <laughs> you know, it could cause a spike in the Cartoon Network ratings. Abby, we can't have that, all right? It would be a catastrophe. <laughs> Why not? You but know, no, then we can then we can print our own food and then eat it after we get high yeah, and prevent the, the cancer munchies, yeah. and just all yeah. it all works 3D out. 3D print which, the food, which, which brings me to the 3D printing thing. I mean, really, 3D printing can revolutionize production, manufacturing, democratize so many things. As if it's not mind blowing enough, the fact that lasers can print things from the bottom up, organs. I mean. For, for God's sake, in t 2014, I mean, how many people die every day on organ donor lists? They will not have to anymore, Lee. Right, uh, they're going to get organs. It's insane. We're, we're, they're, they're very close to organs, which means just around the corner, printing babies. It's got to be <laughs> right there around the corner, which then brings, there's the interesting ethical questions, Abby, as to like, can you hack into a friend's computer and just print him babies? Can you hack into a baby? While he's not home. <laughs> and he comes home to like 10 babies, and he's like, it's not funny. All right, man, they're all over the place. <laughs> You know, it's, it's interesting ethical questions. Uh. It is indeed. Let's hope that they stop, don't start cloning and printing babies, all right? I mean, no, it is crazy, though. I mean, if they could print organs, no, I mean, what could. the hell? Here's the thing. If we allow this technology to go out to the masses rather than just be, like, something rich people have access to, printing organs right. and that kind of thing, it could save lives. It could change the world. But the problem is that you end up with corporations having a stranglehold on right. it. Right, right. Well, I think that... Uh, you know, like computers, people will people will be one step ahead of the corporations in terms of hacking and be able to make their own 3D printer and stuff like that. Let's hope. So, let's talk about a little bit of a disturbing uh, story: the fact that humans can now implant leads into cockroaches. Lee uh, apparently control their movements by remote control or an iPhone app. Yeah. Uh, 
We I don't even know what to say other than the fact that it's just <laughs> we really can now remote control cockroaches. But with, with an iPhone app, which is interesting, because aren't iPhones kind of controlling us? I mean, <laughs> we think we're controlling the cockroach, but really, how many people are able to detach from their iPhone? So I think we're unknowingly we're controlling ourselves via that. That video, That's I disgusting. thought I thought it was of a remote control cockroach. That Me is too. actually Congress. <laughs> and the controller, that's ExxonMobil. So that's... <laughs> I thought it was the cockroach. But. Well, Congress has a lower <laughs> popularity than cockroaches, as disgusting and vile as cockroaches are. That says a lot for Congress. Maybe we can remote control Congress and have them actually do the bidding at their constituency. That would be very nice <laughs> if we could just implant some leads in Congress. <laughs> they're already, they already look like they're just being kind of robotically controlled anyway with the lobbyists. Um, you know, let's talk about probably the most amazing technology I've seen. I mean, other than 3D printing, this is just absurd. Straight up Harry Potter style, <laughs> invisible cloak time. What in the hell? Lee, I don't even <laughs> understand. Let me quickly really yeah, say yeah. the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Toronto has created a cloak adaptive to different objects and sizes, not full-fledged invisibility yet, but, but we're close. steps away from being Harry Potter. I mean, what the hell's going on? How is this going to affect society when everyone can hide behind an invisibility cloak? And, and of course, whenever something like this comes out, it's immediately like the, the military is often behind it and they want to use it for all kinds of like death and destruction or spying, you know, things like that. But I think it could be used for good, you know? It could be used for just uh, wonderful things like watching people in the shower <laughs> or you could wrap it around Carl Rove so no one has to look at him anymore or, or watching people in the shower. There's that one too. I noticed that, that always, see, whenever you mention invisibility, people are always like, I you can watch people in the yeah, shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, is that really yeah. that great a thing? I mean, in our selfie, narcissistic world, most people would just volunteer to be watched in the shower nowadays. Uh, outside this building, a guy just offered to me. He was just like, well, watch me in the shower. So I don't know why that's like always... like a portable shower. Yeah. He's like, here, just watch me. I don't know why that's what people <laughs> no, always I go like to. I like the Carl Rove yeah. hiding him more than, than the shower thing. Yeah. So we can print organs while wearing an invisibility cloak and have cockroaches make our dinner, Lee. <laughs> how in the hell is this going to change it's the world and how is it going to change the way we live it's in it? It's a wonderful future. I actually do think it's, uh, the, the potential of humankind right now is huge. It's bigger than it's ever been. The question is whether we can focus on achieving that or whether we continue to be lost in like this vapor cloud of vapid nothingness, you know, these distractions and subtle arousal of screen flashes and car crashes, whether we can look past that and actually progress as a species. That's the question. That is the end all question, Lee. Let's hope, for God's sake, let's hope that let's we hope. take the latter or the former, whatever you said. Uh, Lee Camp, thanks so much, man. Appreciate Thank you, it. Abby.